Hello, hello, OCSB. I am Steph Pearson. I am here from a closet because this is the quiet place that I can be by myself in the building today. So I'm feeling a little bit like Harry Potter at the moment. Um, but uh, I hope you'll bear with me and won't let the, uh, the learning instruments behind us, learning activities behind us distract from um, all the amazing things that we could do through workspace. So um, I, again, am Steph Pearson. I am at the S Pearson on the Twitters, or you can get me there on the email, uh, stephanie.pearson at ocsb.ca. And so the, today's workspace, uh, today's walkthrough, this, this hour's walkthrough is really kind of aimed at the 9 to 12 level. How can we use workspace in order to um, engage our students in learning activities and things that they're going to be doing in our schools. So before we get started, I'm just going to start with a short prayer. Oh, this should say the serenity player. Oh, no, this is different. Apparently, I, we're going to do a spring prayer because this is what I prepared, apparently. So the mate in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. May the glory and the promise of this joyous time of year, which is really September, increase and in happiness to you and those you hold most dear. And may Christ, our risen Savior, be always by your side to bless you most abundantly and be your loving guide. And I also want to do a quick acknowledgement of the land and I want to do something a little bit differently. Um, so maybe some of you have seen this uh, particular website, maybe have not. Again, if we, I really think that it is important that we constantly talk about why we acknowledge the land. It's not just good enough to make, say the statement because otherwise it just becomes something that we say and we don't really think about why we're saying it. So, um, so this, if you click on this link, this is again a total beside, but I, I wanted to make sure that you knew that was available to you is um, it's called native-land.ca and essentially what it allows you to do is take a look at all these places around the world that have been um, identified by the original first peoples that were settled in those areas so even just for our students to be able to say that there are first people all over the world um, and a lot of these organizations so a lot of these uh, indigenous groups um, from the far far north um, they actually work together in a, a circum um, circumference global north circumference of um in an agency together where they talk about in issues facing peoples of the far north um what's also great is that you can scroll in to anywhere in north america in australia and south america and be able to identify the different territories of the original people that live on this grant so you could challenge the students to look up other things that they've been talking about in their books in their science lessons and ask them who were the original peoples on that land you can also talk about what languages those are and what treaties. Again, um, in Ottawa, we really need to understand that our land is, our Algonquin land is unceded, which means there was never a formal treaty between uh, the settler people, um, the Canadian government, the um, um, British government, French government. There was never any uh, official treaty. Um, and so it's unceded in that we are guests here on this land. It was never formally passed over to um, between those two groups. So um, really making sure that our students under, understand that is, is really part important part of acknowledging the land. And then here, just as we'll pass this out in the future, it's a whole activity around disappearing lands. How do we talk about this more with our students? Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to workspace. So one of the things we really want to, want to make sure that we um we're really really clear about is we're talking hapra okay I, i'm not saying don't talk about hapra hapra when we say hapra we're actually talking about a whole raft of tools a whole variety of um, activities that are uh, available and tools that sit in the whole hapra environment so that's things like dashboard highlights um the gmail uh the sharing tab the um discovery all of those sit in hapra when we talk about go to your HAPRA folders, yes, that's pushed out by HAPRA, but what we're actually talking about there is going into Drive to find those HAPRA tools. So you can see right there, if we use the term HAPRA and not specifically talk about HAPRA workspace, we're gonna start getting confusion. And that's where a lot of confusion happens in, in the spring is what teachers who are using HAPRA dashboard to push out stuff to their students, those students aren't then going to to the, the portal and clicking on HAPRA, they actually needed to go to their drive. So when we decided, when we were trying to talk about how do we actually streamline this, um, the board's direction was, let's talk about HAPRA workspace, because that is the tool that means one-stop shopping for all staff and all students. It also means that parents know exactly from K to 12, they know exactly where their students' work is going to be, because it's one click on the portal into, um, into their, um, 
their their work and they'll be able to see all the workspaces available to those students. We'll talk, we'll show you what that looks like on the back end or from the student view, because I know that's um, one of the anxieties that teachers have around this is that, well, I don't know what it looks like from the student view. So I'm, I don't wanna use it if I don't know what it looks like for the students. So we're gonna go through all of that today. So we, again, we really, really encourage you when you're talking about, when you're working with students, when you're working with parents, that you don't just talk about go to HAPRA. You wanna say go to HAPRA workspace. And I'm actually gonna jump onto the student portal so that you can actually see what that looks like. So here I am on the student, on the staff portal. And in case you didn't know, on this left-hand side here, you can actually link directly to the student portal. So we're talking nine to 12 today. So I'm gonna click on the student portal there. And so again, this first button here, this first icon is the one that the students are all going to use in order to find the workspaces that you have created, the workspaces that your, your colleagues have created. So this is one place where they're gonna go. This is where they start the work. This is where they submit the work. This is where they um, see what's coming up. This is where they see overdue work, all in the same place. Now, again, I'm gonna pull up a student account. Hopefully you'll be seeing that right now going to jump back to my screen over oh, one just going to jump back there to my screen just to make sure that you're seeing all the things that we're trying to get seen here so here's my student po portal so i'm going to click on this one looks slightly different um, so i'm going to click here on this icon again it's the first icon i'm going to click here and i'm going to be brought into the workspaces that are available to me as a student user so again so that you can see what it looks like from the student view so you can see right away, I don't have to click anywhere and bang, I have all of these workspaces are already available to me. I can also see what is due and upcoming due date. So I'll show you where you can add that date so that the students know exactly when they're working on it. You can also see that the students can click through here and find various other pieces of information, all the things that are due, what's overdue, what's coming up, and all the things that we haven't actually associated a due date with. So students can find all of that information right there. Okay, so here's a list of all the workspaces. And you'll also notice I have a tab up here. As a student, I can actually choose my French class or I can choose my um, history class. Okay, so the students can then sort that way. Again, mostly relevant because if I'm doing my first cohort, I'm only gonna see those workspaces or if I'm cohort B, I can only see those workspaces or the um, however that's gonna look. Um, for virtual academy. So um, I digress. So what I'm gonna pop back into, so that's why we're really talking about workspaces because workspaces have one place where the students go to do the work as opposed to when we talk about HAPRA, we're actually talking about several tools and it doesn't actually focus down what's really, really necessary. All right, so without further ado, and again, um, just before I go any further, I do wanna say that um, this is aimed at beginner users. We know that there's lots of people who have never ever used HAPRA uh, workspace before. So we just wanted to give another opportunity for people to, to walk through what this looks like. Um, at two o'clock, we'll be doing a Q&A where uh, there's a different link on the LT return to school page where you'll be able to click on there and jump in with a meet and you can be able to ask us any questions that you may, be, uh, that you may have about workspace, okay? Um, all right, so back to where I was going with this in the first place. So what we're going to do we're here on the staff portal, and we're just going to click here on the very top so you can see that we can click to dashboard or to workspace. So we're going to click workspace to the bottom because that's going to bring us directly to where we want to go. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to just walk you through what you're looking at here. I'm going to start over um, on this side. So you'll see you'll, when your classes are all populated, you'll see each one of them here and you'll be able to choose the different workspaces associated to those classes. Okay. You can choose my workspaces. So these are the ones that are either owned by me that have been shared with me that I can now label. So for example, I can use different labels for each of my workspaces uh, to help me find them more easily. And as we start developing more, more workspaces, this is gonna be very handy too. It's a little digital binder that you pull off the shelf, but here it's going to be in all your workspaces. And the last but least is work, professional learning that I, I am either leading as a facilitator or that I am participating in as a learner. And you can see here that I actually can change. I can look at what statuses there are. And if I am a participant, I'm gonna have fewer than if I'm a facilitator because of this is what I do. All right, 
So um, again, I'm going to go back to my own to me. And what I'm going to do is actually, um, actually delete this. I'm going to just write this again. So what I'm going to do is walk you through literally all the steps in order to make a workspace. Um, so on this big blue side on this side, I'm going to hit the word create. Now, this is a new prompt as of Sunday. So again, just making sure that everybody feels comfortable with that. When you are making a workspace for students, you want this left-hand choice. This is where you're going to be working with um, with other staff. Maybe you're doing a professional judge, uh, professional workspace around uh, cell resources you have in your school. Um, that would be here. So I'm going to select this one for students, and we're going to talk about social justice today. And I as associate the class that I want it with. I am going to create my own groups. Okay. And I am going to say, whatever the information is, this is going to be for religion, okay? And here's the cover image. And one of the reasons we really love the cover image and, and leveraging the cover image is your students who have limited um, uh, language skills, whether they're um, learning English or that they're um, they are limited readers, um, this allows them to find the workspace by image. So uh, for example, so now I'm going to put in the word social justice here. That's what my heading is going to be. And I like this one here. And um, so again, what's really great is it also gives you alt text. So this is, uh, alt text refers to a screen reader. So if a student who is blind or low vision, or maybe a student using read and write, um, this will actually read to them what this image is, is um, actually, what the, the, the image looks like so that the students know what they're looking for. Okay, so I can also change the alt text and I can also change where this part of the image is. So I'm gonna hit save. And now this image is associated to this workspace. Okay, so originally when we first start, we're gonna start as a draft because it doesn't want, we don't want the workspace to release to your students until you're ready to do that. Okay, and when you are ready to do that, we're gonna come back to this word publish. And this is something we sometimes forget as facilitators to remind people to do, but you need to publish the workspace. When you're ready to release it to your students, you need to publish it. So now here we have a whole other raft of resources. So. Um, so again, we have our workspace tab here. We know that this is our social justice and we're gonna work across our different tabs here. So the first thing we're gonna do is, um, I would say for a beginner, for a beginner user, you want to shut off this option. This means that students can't accidentally add cards when they're going through this activity. It may be something that you're, use, you're going to use later, but at this point it means that students don't have access to add any cards whatsoever, okay? So you can see here, I'm gonna have some due dates that are gonna be available to me. I can see what classes are, um, are associated currently to this and other teachers who are co-facilitators. So across the top, we have four columns. And so the, the most important column is this one here, the evidence columns. But um, I found evidence maybe sometimes a challenging for students. So work assigned and submitted. So let's spell that right, submit. Okay, so you see that I just clicked on there and I can change any of these titles. So look and read, instead of goals, I'm gonna say, what are we learning today? Because I know students ask that every single time. So this is the stuff they need to look and read. This is the stuff that's going to be assigned and submitted. And in this column, it does default to the word rubrics, but I'm going to call it this other extension. This might be for students who want a little bit more, okay? One of the things that we love about Workspace is that even though this already looks a little busy as a teacher, only the columns that you populate are the ones that show up in the student view. So what does that mean? So let's say I'm going to add a card. So all I did is I click this little button and it's gonna open up this little white card. These are all called cards, each one of these um, that, that are added to each column. But this third column is magical. This third column takes anything that's in your Google Drive, makes a copy. As soon as the student hits a start button, it makes a copy for those students. You remain the owner of every single one of those copies. And it also means that it houses all the work you're distributing in one place. You don't have to go back through the drive. You don't have to go back to your email. You don't have to um, look for the link somewhere else. 
everything that the student needs to work on or submit back to you will go through the card that you place in this third column. So I'm gonna call this, um, we're gonna do a bio poem about social justice, okay? So I might describe the work, read and complete. I might put more information here. So now I've got two pieces of information in there, okay? Oh, I accidentally clicked out of it. No worries, I can go back to these action dots and then I'll click edit. So now I've got open again, and now I need to add what I want the students to work on. So here I'm going to go into my drive file. You'll also see you have some other options. You can upload from your computer, or you can actually add a link. Now, I'll caution you. One of the best things to do is use Drive because Google um, Slides, Docs, Sheets, Jamboards, um, those work the best in HAPRA. And the other reason that they work the best is they're the most accessible. You may have this lovely PDF worksheet. I really, really caution you about against using this column to distribute to your students because the students can't type on it and they don't read by screen readers. So there becomes a whole other layer of complexity for students. If it's a really great PDF, then we there's a, another whole YouTube channel about how to take that PDF and make it a Word document or a slide um, so that you can make it most accessible to your students. Also most accessible for you to assess as well. The, the idea is in HAPRA is to reduce the amount of running around you have to do as a teacher so that you can really focus on what matters, your students, and getting that content to your students, those skills to your students. So here I am, I'm gonna click on my drive, and you can see I have many options. So you can see that this is, this is a, a window you're probably used to seeing other places around the Google land. So I can choose from my Google Drive, from shared drives, things that have been shared with me. But I caution you, if you don't own it, you may get problems in this, uh, in this world. So you're gonna wanna, if somebody's sharing a Google Doc with you, you're gonna wanna make a copy of it before you share it out with your students. Again, I can upload, I can pull from my documents, or I can pull my images and videos. So I happen to know that mine is going to be down here, but I could also search for it up here as well. So here's my bio poem with template. So I'm gonna make sure it's selected and hit select. All right, you'll notice that I have a new a few options. It's going to be a copy for student or a copy for group. We'll come back to groups in a second. So this is going to be a copy for students. So every student who comes on, they're going to click on the start button and they're going to get an automatic copy of this activity. I can schedule a start date. That means that this code isn't going to appear until I say it's ready to appear. If it's no date selected, it's automatically that day. Oh, I did it again, back in and edit. I can also choose a due date. So I'm gonna choose a due date that's late in September because I don't want students to be worried about how quickly this needs to get in. And um, we'll come back to the groups again. So now I think I'm ready. I'm gonna hit done. So all of a sudden now I have a bio poem that has some information and it is ready to go. I don't have to do anything else. This is going to be enough for that student, those students to get this information maybe through the oration that we did in class, maybe we've done a group activity, maybe they've watched something, and this is the activity you've asked them to do it, that might be the only thing, okay? And so what does this look like? Well, let's take a look. I'm gonna go to my student groups page and I'm going to add, uh, what student did I have over here? I have student, I have student 17. So I'm gonna add my student 17 to this, to this group so that you can see what this looks like. I go back to workspace and so now I can see there's my group there I have student 17 so what I've done again just to do that more closely I added a student in this section or added my whole class so I can even pull my entire class over or I can um, pull this entire class over and it just keeps adding groups okay I can also add um, so you know, as you go, you'll see that that works, okay? Now I'm back to workspaces, and now I can see I have more population of groups here. But what I'm gonna do is this little tiny triangle, I'm gonna click it, and now I can see that that allows me to see what that student's going to see. So here I go into that tab, it's open a new tab, and there I can see that this is all a student 17 would see. They would only see this one card. Think about how direct and simple that is for our students with uh, executive functioning concerns. Um, students who are overwhelmed, even teachers who are overwhelmed. This is a very easy place to start because all the student has to do is they go into the student portal, 
they click the workspace, they find the class that they're working in, but because you set a due date, it would also come up under due dates and they click on the start button. They may be tempted to click here, but notice I can't actually click on that. They have to hit start. All right. So I'm going to go back here to my workspace. So even though it looks busy on your side, it's actually really, really simplified on the student's side. OK, so this is the work that I've started with. All right. So one of the things we really love is, oh, yes, this <laughs> this is something that uh, is uh, is something that we get very confused about all the time. One of the ways that we can make a workspace work longer for us, for an entire unit or even an entire year, although I don't recommend doing that, um, certainly an entire unit, students we know sometimes don't scroll. And as this workspace gets bigger, they might not scroll right to the bottom. So one of the ways we can actually stop that is if we include cards below into a section. So I'm gonna actually delete that for a second. So one of the things, so you're just seeing, we're looking at the very top end, very, very simple. But maybe you're at, ready to add another assignment and you haven't had this information yet for all your students. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a section. We're gonna, we're gonna call this October work, okay? So this is all my work that's gonna happen in October. And I'm going to take this card, okay, I'm gonna show you again very carefully. So I have, I'm, I haven't clicked on the card, but I'm kind of grabbing it with my mouse. And you'll see that there's in, in the side, there's a little black square. And this is gonna help us notice where we're dragging this. So you can see the little black bar has now jumped to underneath that Octobi sign, because apparently I can't type. So my little Octobi sign, so it's not here at the top anymore, it's now under Octobi. Okay, so again, how did that change for the student? Well, let's take a look. Here I go previewing this with a student. And you'll notice that information, so there's the title there, there's the section header Octobi, and there is the work that the student has to do. Okay, again, it's moved it down the page. Um, one of the things uh, we really like about this, so then as the work gets older, it moves down the page. Okay. Um, all right, so next thing we're going to do is maybe let's add a second card. So one of the we, so you, once you add cards to this top, you can't move this in total. Um, but you can move, so if I add another section, and, and I have some cards in it, so I'm just gonna put in some gobbledygook here. Okay, so now I'm, and I'm gonna also change this card. So notice when I hit the action dots, I have my edit here. I can change this to a different color, just to differentiate for you. So I have this section here, and I have this section here. You'll notice that I actually now, if I hover on the section header, I can move this up or down, and you'll notice that I can move Octobi up. So now I can move the entire section. So if I have things in this column that I want to move up or down my workspace, as long as it's in the same section, it can move all together. So you might actually find that it works better for, um, say you're differentiating a unit and you have some students working on uh, igneous rock, you have some students working on sedimentary and other works on metamorphic, you can move those sections around the page, okay? So uh, another thing that you might wanna do is, um, add resources. So let's say we want to add a YouTube channel. And of course, we're going to add um, something amazing from our YouTubes. So let's do this nature video because maybe students just need a little bit more zen time. So I'm going to copy the nature video, okay? And I'm going to uh, go back to my workspace and instead watch the video. I'm going to use the link button. So I'm going to click that, insert my link, click OK, and now you'll notice that the student, it's embedded right in there. I'm going to hit done, and you'll see there that's where the information. But notice what also happened. There was information that was included in the YouTube video that has now been picked up and now auto generates, not this doesn't work for everything, but often it will auto generate some description for the student. So that becomes really handy. But again, um, it's a really easy way to walk. So what I would maybe do for my students is I would have them watch 
uh, a white card and then going into a, a, another white card. Or I might move this into my Octobi section, maybe. I have to refresh. So sometimes it doesn't, you know, see how the little black dot hasn't showed up? One of the things we found is you just have to hit refresh. So I'm just going to refresh my page. Sometimes sometimes a little refresh can all it can make all the difference. You can also do it on your keyboard by hitting uh, control R or you can hit the little swirly do. So here I am now. Notice I have my little black dot again. Last time I didn't have it. So I just hit refresh and now I can have these two sections in my Octobi section. Okay. Um, so again, very, very simple. What does it look like on the student view? Well, let's just take a refresh here. So now I'm in the student view section. There is my student. Again, look and read and watch. And then the assigned work there. Piece of cake. Okay. Um, now back to here. I'm just going to check my notes. Hold on for a second. All right. So, um, you may decide that you also want to have a little bit um, something else in your to-do section. So here, after they're finished their bio -torm, let me say I want to add a Google form. Okay. So what I need to remember to do when I and I add a Google form is I need to open it separately. I need to open it separately because we need to remember when we put a, a Google form in that third column, we don't want the students to have a copy of your written form, your editing version of your written form. We want them to have a copy of the fill outable form. So we have to open the Google form and then we need to go to the send button. Click on our link and this is the link that we need to actually put in Havra, this viewable link. So here I go, I'm going to copy this, okay, and I'm going to go back to my workspace Okay, and then I'm going to add it here. Now, this will mean that every student will get a copy of that form, uh, an opportunity to fill out the form without it making an actual copy of the form. Um, when you use forms in Google, um, in HAPRA, uh, students have to remember to submit twice. They have to submit on the form and then they have to submit on the actual card. Okay, again, what does this look like? Let's do a little refresh for our friend, student 17 here. Okay, so again, there's the form that I added. So now I'm going to hit start. I'm not a member of the workspace. I can show you that on Google. So we'll, let's just look at what that looks like for student 17. So let's go student 17. I'm going to refresh here. Oh, I bet you the student, it's not going to show up here. Can anybody guess why? It's not going to show up here because I haven't actually published the workspace. So let's just do that. So I'm going to go back up here to the, to the workspace. I'm happy with how amazing my lessons are going to be planned for the next couple of days. Now I'm going to go up here to the publish. So now that it's published, you can see that this sign has changed. Now I can archive it and put it out of, um, I can take it from the students. Okay, so I would remove it from the students' visuals. Now I'm going to go back to our students to make sure that it's all ready to go. And I'm going to move this change to this to all classes. And I'm going to, oh, interesting. I do not see it. I'm going to do a refresh for this student. There it is. There's my social justice workshop. Okay, so I can click on here and again, see what the student has to see. So again, I'm going to hit start on this form. It opens a new file. You'll notice it's the fill outable version. So I'm going to fill this out. Blah, blah, blah. actually has that email address. I feel really sad for them because I use it all the time. Okay, so I'm filling out, out, blah, 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 and I'm going to hit submit. So now it's filled out. So let's go back to see what's happened on the teacher side. Well, oh, wango bango, look at this. I have a student that has started this work, so I know somebody has access to it. I can also use the back end of the form to actually find out whether the student has actually completed it. So why is this useful to me? Well, I can click here and start investigating what student, the student's work is. I can click on here and see that student's work, okay? I can also submit on behalf of that student. So here we go. So again, I'm gonna do that more slowly. So I'm gonna return. I'm not happy for that student or they're like, miss, miss, I didn't finish. So I'm gonna return for edit. 
So again, you can see that the student is there. Okay, click on that. And again, they're like, no, no, miss, I was done that assignment. So I've clicked on the student who needs to submit, and I'm gonna submit for that student. Okay, similarly here, um, these da this data would also indicate who had started, who has submitted, and who has already assessed, okay? So another reason we really love Workspace, and we really hope that you're gonna love it, is that now I can actually assess the student work. So let's say I'm gonna give them a level four, or maybe I'm gonna just give them a complete, or more amazingly, and thank goodness for smart people we work with, so Tracy Nisrella gave us this little gem. So I'm gonna actually hit um, Windows key and the and, uh, period, and I actually come up with emojis, or I can right click and select emoji. And so now I can put some hearts, or I can put a peace sign, or a circle. Um, I could actually assess my students with emojis. So you could establish as a class a set of emojis that mean different things. So there I am with my emojis, and I'm going to return for final, which means that now, now that's been assessed, the student has different access to that, um, that information. So um, I should have showed you here, but I should show you what that looks like. So um, I'm gonna go back to student 17, and I'm gonna have them start this bio poem. And I can show you a few things that students might actually do so that you can be aware that these might be challenges. So it's taking a little bit of time here. You'll notice that I have started. So it's opening here. And my start sign, my start button has changed to a submit button. You'll also notice here on my actual card, I now have a, uh, a trash can. So I can remove this from the card. You have always made, you are always the owner of every single document associated to a workspace. This is very, very different than what happens when you share um, in the dashboard tool. In workspace, you remain the owner, which means that you, no matter how many times a student trashes their work from HAPRA, from the workspace, you still have a copy as the teacher. It's in your drive file. You can search for the student's name and all of the work that they have done in the whole workspace, in any workspace um, that you own, that student will come up in your Google Drive. Now, beautiful for that, it doesn't come up willy-nilly in your Drive. It actually contains all itself within a workspace folder that is that is created in Drive and then sub sorted by subdividers and workspace, which means that it doesn't make a mess of your Drive, it keeps it all contained, and yet all the student work is still contained for you. So if a student accidentally um, deletes the card, it's here, but you can go and find it from your work. Um, so here we go, we're gonna do some, um, we're gonna do some edits here. Um, and actually, while we're here, I'm gonna show you a couple things that we tweaked on this uh, activity so that you can see what works. So um, even though Workspace has that rubric column, default column on the fourth, the fourth page, there is no way to connect a rubric to the assignment in a workspace. So what we recommend is put your actual rubric on your assignment. That way, when you go to give student feedback or feed forward, you will actually be able to uh, complete the information this way. One of the tricks that we've learned in, um, in e-learning is I could also use a screencast to then go through what the student's doing on the assignment. And then instead of typing information about how they're doing, I would just plop in a screencast that, that tells the student what they're doing, how they're doing. This is called a single point rubric, just in case you've never seen one before. Um, what it says is that this is the level three expectations. This is the success criteria to get a level three. If you are exceeding those expectations, then I'm gonna put information in this column. And if you are still developing those particular success criteria, then I'm gonna put feedback about what that's gonna look like. Or as I said, you might do a screencast, pop that in so that you can actually point out different strengths and next steps for your students in the actual assignment. So let's say I've done some typing in here. I'm the student, bango, bango. I'm all done. I'm gonna close this again as the student. I'm gonna hit submit. I'm gonna send the work to teacher. Now, what does that look like on the back end? Well, can I still click on this? And the answer is, as a student, I still can. So I can click on it and see what I've done. Okay, great. Oh, what's changed? Notice? I am now in suggest mode. And if you haven't played with suggest mode, your life is about to change. 
this becomes such a useful tool for giving formative feedback, um, to giving uh, support feedback as students are working through their documentation. So you'll notice if I go to add as a student more information into my document, it'll automatically add a comment which links and demonstrates what I have added to the work. If I added more information here, there it is. Notice it's also in green. When we look at the student ver version at the end, that's actually gonna be flagged on from the teacher side that they've gone back in and changed it. So because I am the teacher on this document, um, I can't actually accept or reject any of these changes. I am putting the information on there, but unless I go and delete it this way, it's gonna come up in that final document. So again, right away, you know exactly when students have worked or not worked on their, on their assignments as you expect. So again, I'm in suggest mode. I don't have the option to turn to editing. So everything that I add, which may be totally valid information, um, it's forcing, it's flagging for the teacher that that information has been changed. So again, let's go back to the teacher view, knowing that that student has gone back in and worked. Okay, sorry. So here I am, here's the student that has uh, started the work, okay, and submitted it, okay? So I'm gonna click on that. And now again, we're using the teacher view. I'm gonna close some of these, these links so that I can be a little bit more clear about where I am here. So here, I'm going to go and I want to see where that student's at. Maybe they're at home, they're cohort B. I'm working with A today. I want to see where B is at. So all I've had to do is just go into the workspace, see that the student is, is, has started, click on there. It's going to auto-magically open it in a tab, and I can start to see what the student is working on. So again, I can see that there's information there. And if I just give it a second, oh, I can see that the student is actively working on that. I can see that up here. Okay, and if it's a long document, all you do is click on it and it'll jump you to where they are in that document. And I can see that the student added this information because now I have these comment changes, which means that as the teacher, depending on what my expectations were, I could go in and either accept those changes uh, because the student made some great adjustments, or I can go, no, you ran out of time. Sorry, that's not going to happen. Okay, so again, that's all in the back end that allows me to manage what's happening with my students, to be able to jump in and give feedback to the student. Because again, the student's still working on here. So maybe I'm gonna say, you haven't got any footnotes yet. So there's a great video on um, YouTube, on the Explorer tool that you can use more footnotes. You can use more sourcing, right? So again, now I can give feedback to that student. And now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna give that student another opportunity to return to keep working on that assignment. Because now that I've given feedback, I want them to have that opportunity to improve what they've already created. It wasn't a lot of work for me to do that, but again, gives the student more direction. And this is when we're working in this digital age when we don't have all of our students in front of us, it's really important that we find those ways that our tools can allow us to give that feedback that we could give in real life in that face-to-face -face opportunity, but digitally. And again, all hosted here by um, by the workspace, okay? So there again is the student working on their project. And if we go back to the student, I'm gonna hit refresh because again, I as the teacher have made differences. So now the student just needs to refresh and they're gonna have different access. So here's the workspace is doing some back end work now. You can see that I as the teacher have added some information and you'll notice that over here, it's been now gone back to editing so that the student has editing rights. So now if I go and add information, I can do that. I can use my explore tool. I can use my explore tool. Dogs. And I'm going to add a list of dogs. Again, this is a little bit extra information here, but I'm gonna add this little piece here add it here and then I'm going to hit this little button here and again this is all on the YouTube channel how to use the explore tool I can now click this and automatically I've got a footnote there on my document just as my teacher had said. okay so again now that I'm now that I feel really confident that I've done what she said you'll notice that I now have the submit button as the student 
I can submit, submit the work to teacher. And again, back on the student view, teacher view, there's that submission. I can now finish, give the emoji feedback as it were. So let's choose, oh, I, can, I can do dog and it'll search for dog and return for final, okay? So one of the ways that we wanna know is like, has have students started working? Well, it, you do here know in Workspace whether the students actually clicked on that start button. You can assign students and groups here. You can also look at the activity summary. So what card are overdue? Which learner, when were they last active? And you can see that none of these students have been active, but there it is, student 17 was active in all three groups 22 seconds ago. You can see um, what card has been, um, what evidence card has been finishing, who has done the work on those various things, if there's an assessment that has been evaluated. And of course, um, I can create a grade sheet. And again, that's advanced, but know that it's possible. The other thing to do is if you have like a, a communication card perhaps that you want teachers and parents to be using back and forth, this is a great way to, excuse me, be able to identify um, what students work has been doing and when was the last time um, they, they worked on that on a, that activity. And that's all in your individual activity. Okay. One of the things that we know teachers really need is to be able to identify which group is which. So um, one of the great ways to do that is through dashboard. And there is a YouTube video on the how to channel about how to make cohorts in your dashboard. But in case you didn't, you haven't play with that, you can also do it here. And I showed you really quickly earlier, um, but let's say my student my student 17 is one of my ELL students. I also have student one, and I also have student 11. So this group I'm gonna remember is my very special group, that I need to change what assignments I'm putting out to those students so that they can best understand what the activity is going to be about. Although we also have to remember that the best thing we can do for teachers is allowed every student to work in their preferred mode. So if a student wants to listen to something, they should be able to choose that. If a student wants to read something, they should be able to choose that. If a student wants to be able to create something verbally, again, allow us to choose. We know that it's essential for some of those students to be able to have that choice, but it benefits all. And I think you'd be really hard pressed to find even your most um, dedicated, academic, capable students who wouldn't also benefit from the same systems that you're giving to your students who need the most supports. Scaffolding helps everybody be successful. So one of the things that we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our workspaces. And now what I want to do is I want maybe to give another bio poem that might be more suited to um, my ELL students. So for example, so now what I'm doing, so it defaults to all the groups. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edit so that only group two and three see this card because my group one is my special group. So I'm going to now go bio poem, and I'm gonna put the same information. Now maybe this time I'm gonna do a bio poem. Um, but I'm gonna do this one because this one's better to student to student groups. And instead of having it all groups, I'm just going to select my ESL group, okay? So this is the group that is doing this learner. So now I click off and you'll notice I have two separate cards. When a student goes in here, they see the card that is most relevant to them, not all the cards. So again, reduces what's important. Maybe I don't need my students in my ESL group to watch this. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna say not all groups. I'm going to say just group three and group four because I don't wanna confuse my ELCL students with having them do that as well. So now when we actually go and we take a look at what these groups can see, if I just look at group two, I can see that they see this video, this card and this card, but they don't see all three cards. Oh, interesting. But I bet you if I pick group one, notice they don't see the watch card, but they do see this bio poem core and they do see this form because they're also a tag to this group. So that's a way that you can start manipulating both your cohorts. So maybe it's much easier to have one cohort uh, in having separate cards, or maybe the assignments have to be slightly different between your two cohorts and your afternoon, and your, uh, your day one and day two cards. Um, maybe you have students who need a lot more structure or a lot simplified work. 
um, again, this is a really, really easy way to, um, to change that. And just clicking on these gives you a preview of what those different groups can see. So if I want it to be all groups, there I go. I have my two bio poems, my watch, and my form. Um, all right, I'm just trying to think of what else I can give you without trying to confuse you even more. As I sit here in my closet, I, I feel very strange and wonderful looking here. Um, one of the things that we found is a really easy trick um, when we are doing, uh, using workspace in order to push out work. Um, traditionally, a work, uh, an assignment um, might be, um, Okay, I'm gonna open another assignment here. Let's do, let's do, all right, so this is an old assignment and I wanna make it more digital friendly. I wanna make it so that students are able to read it more clearly. So. This assignment allows students to choose from three different types of poems. Again, you've seen this rubric here, and you'll notice that my research template is also here. And what's really nice about this is that students can, um, it's in tables. So the means that the tables will grow, but the formatting in the rest of my page won't change. So the tables grow and my forming don't, doesn't change. So let's just try what that looks like yeah, from a new document. So a little trick here in case you haven't noticed yet, you could go docs.new in Omnibox and it'll automatically open a new document for you, automatically saves in the main folder of your drive. A uh, really quick way to do this. So I'm gonna do some math quiz, okay? So here I am with my math quiz and I'm gonna go two plus five, equals x. I'm going to start out real at 2x. How about 2x plus 5 equals x? I don't know if that's a real math question. But instead of having the students then answer just in a line here, because once you start doing more complex math, that's going to be a real challenge to you. So what I'm going to do is actually go insert table, and I know I'm going to have a question, and then I want an answer. So instead, I'm going to make a table like this. I can highlight this and say, insert row below. And so my next question could be x plus two equals 25, okay? So now I can have my students enter the answers here so that the formatting doesn't change. And you'll also know, so if I go two x plus five equals x, and then my next line might be, um, two plus five equals six, and then whatever my math is, notice that this has stayed perfectly in line with each other. And even though this isn't perfect alignment, it is moving together so that all my answer is in one place and it doesn't start moving all over um, and confusing you as the marker or me as the student. Another trick we like to do is maybe highlight these boxes and change the color of box that the students know they're always answering in the yellow zone. You can also change the color of the page. So I'm going to go here, file page setup, and then I can change the color of the page. I'm going to do a nice blue color here. Okay. So again, ask the students. You can even have these boxes so the students are only answering in the white section. Again, whatever you, whatever directive that you want, you're going to find that this is going to make your math um, and all your assignments more more clear. So here's my science example. So I'm going to go and insert table. So I'm going to say rank these liquids for viscosity, for example. I'm going to have mercury, mercury. I'm going to have water. I'm going to have molasses. Why am I choosing the hard words to spell? I don't know. And instead of so, I might have um, insert some rows below. And I'm going to have maybe my one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to say justify because now I can now, well, maybe I'll just go even crazier here. And I'm going to insert column to the right so that this is my rank number. Here is where I can do my copy as paste as a student. OK, 
Okay, so here's my white box. Again, scaffolding for the students so that you get the information I need, you need as a teacher, but not um, the students don't get confused as to getting convoluted sentences. Again, um, most of our courses don't actually require complete sentences as part of the rubric. So if you know of a student who's going to struggle to communicate in full sentences, scaffold it like this so that your students can see, well, if I have something in every part of the box, I know I've finished the question. So now I can put, I can now copy and paste these. Um, I can copy the information in here, insert the information, and again, push it back to you. And I know when I have completed all of these pieces, so fun fact, this is called transparent. Um, when I know I've completed all the white boxes, I've, I've finished my assignment. Okay, I think I've got off a little bit of track here, but again, I want you to just think differently about how you can structure amazing documents that you already have to make both your life and your students' life easier. We really, really love, um, we really, really love HAPRA workspace because it's best for our students. It clearly points out what you have to give. It uh, clearly allows you as a teacher to be able to follow what the student's activity, to be actively involved in that creation process so that we're not getting autopsy feedback at the back. We're not giving them, here's all the information you should have known for this entire assignment. We're being able to say, as they're working, we're able to give them feedback as they go so that they can be most successful at the end. Because isn't that what we want? We want all our students to be successful. So we really hope that you can see the benefits of workspace and how um, you're not going to be running around drive anymore. You're not going to be searching your email. All of your assessment is all there. It's all ready to go. And we really, really hope that you love it because um, I don't know what I would have done. I, I didn't use it in the classroom and I feel very, very foolish. That was two and a half years ago. I would be very different now. So again, we're really excited that you joined this afternoon. Um, there is a, a meet link in the LT back to school page. Um, we're going to do a hangout now uh, for an hour starting at two o'clock uh, to uh, take any questions that people might have. If there's little tweaks that you're looking to do, um, you can certainly uh, join us there or you can send uh, your LT consultant a, um, uh, an email so that we are here to help. And we know that there are so many things that are uncertain, but we do know that this tool is going to make your life better. And we just want to get you over that hump so that you under that you you feel confident that your students are going to be ready to rock and roll and support you. So um, good luck into the school year. We can't wait to see you and reach out. We want to help. We love you. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon.